Today on the bench is a FLIR Systems cable. This is about a 200 foot cable or a 61 meter cable. The reason I purchased this cable was I was on eBay the other day looking for a cable reel for a project that I have coming up and most reels brand new uh, cost a little over $100 for an inexpensive reel. Looking at some of the different used options I did end up spending a little over a hundred dollars but the reason I got this particular one was because it actually had a uh, padded flight case so I could put my cable reel in the box and know that it would be protected uh, you know in transit and things like that uh, moving things around in a trailer it makes things a lot more stackable uh, makes it you know you don't have to worry about things getting damaged as much and so on. So uh, what I'd like to do today is I have no use for this particular cable. I didn't buy, uh, I didn't make this purchase for the cable. I just did it for the box and the reel. But it was very interesting uh, the quality of cable that uh, came with this. Now this is from a military uh, surplus seller um, and just I love the attention to detail to this cable. How well engineered it is and and how well built it is for the purposes that it would have been used for uh, you know knowing FLIR, uh, FLIR however people pronounce it uh, it's it's for thermal imaging camera systems um, I'm assuming that this that's what this was used for as well uh, systems cable WSTI whatever that means um, got this beautiful beautiful connector on here made by a company called uh, Glenair G-L-E-N-A-I-R I-R um, so I, I don't know much about these type of uh, connectors but I have to say when when you know feeling it and I put both of the ends together twisted them together and it has this lovely uh, you know click to it that that holds it in place so it's it's not gonna with vibration uh, it's not gonna back off uh, so what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna take this apart we're gonna take probably some different tools and I'd like to uh, cut it back here on the boot and I'd like to see what type of cabling is actually in here uh, simply because I've seen that these connectors are fairly expensive if it's cabling that I can use, if it's coax, uh, I might actually get the connector for this and, and try to reuse it. Um, looking at the pin style on it, I'm going to assume that it might be twisted pair. It looks like there's um, two power connectors on the Z and W, and then the rest are just for uh, control and uh, things of that nature. So getting into it, I don't know how hard this is going to be to get into but it's really going to show the quality of how well this cable has been built and already you can see how hard it is for me to even to chew in this with an actual tool I mean normal use you know this cable is not going to degradate over time now I can already see that there is some shielding in here I could only imagine what this cable was used for if it was for you know most of the the products that you see with with flair are handheld devices so I can only imagine what type of application this was going to be used you know on on a vehicle or something like that it had to be a, a fairly substantial uh, device whatever whatever this was connecting to um, maybe this was even a, a method of you know something built onto a vehicle and then um, to it maybe it was a removable module and this was the cable or the interconnect to go from that module but it was on a cable reel so it, it, it was probably for some sort of a mobile application of some sort you know semi-mobile but 
maybe for a stationary setup. So I, I, if anybody has any idea of what it would have been used for, I'd definitely like to know in the comments section if anybody has any idea. As you can see how difficult this is to, to peel back. You know, you can see that this definitely had to have been a very, very expensive piece. Now, I don't know if this is, this was gl just glued between, because you can see the two layers in there, if you can see that fairly. Um, you have the outer boot and then you have the, the cable itself and um, very well glued together or ultrasonically welded together however however they manage to do that and like I say I, I had no intention of using this cable I don't have any type of equipment that will interface with it so it's completely useless to me. I just bought it for the, um, the cable reel and the case that came with it. Um, so excuse me for anybody that's screaming, oh, I could use that. I need that. Okay, so getting into it. we can see that there is some sort of a band here that is holding the braiding. I'm uh, assuming that's for, for grounding and for um, shielding and for structural. So let's see here. Let's see if we can cut this guy. Okay, yeah, that, that cut. Wow, just, just an amazing amount of steps in this to hold this together. You know, obviously built to last. And look at that, how that was how that was clamped on there. Very cool. Now looking under here, it looks like there's some sort of captain tape ask material underneath holding all the different wires okay so yeah getting getting back here now I don't see any twisted pairs, which I'm actually kind of surprised by a little bit. Uh, it just seems like straight conductors. Let's see if we can get some of this tape off of here. Might have to get the uh, scissors out. Might not be a job for the uh, side cutters there. There we go. All right. So, what do we have here? So we have a little bit of shrink wrap going over some of these different conductors here. I mean, a beautiful, beautiful attention to detail on here. Going to peel back Actually, let me see if I have my exacto knife here. I mean, the amount of time that it took to, to put this cable together, uh, I gotta imagine that all of this was was hand done. Had to have, had to have been. There's there's no other way. You know, there's no machine that can get in here and, and do this. Now, looking at this, 
it looks like there's some sort of if this okay so this is this is tape this looks like tape but almost like it's like a silicone tape it's almost like a Teflon tape or something like that um, doesn't cut too quickly um, and then I see okay so we do have some sort of okay so what they're doing here is so we have the main main shielding and then under here we have the secondary shielding and that's being bonded to this guy under here and then they're being uh, bonded together with a beautiful um, solder joint right here and a bunch of different wires look at the, oh wow look at this look how that was that was placed in there okay so what they're doing is these connectors might actually be pre uh, wired soldered in with with different pigtails and then and then you terminate to to those that's interesting if that's how these connectors work I, again I've never worked with the connector this this high end before uh, so I have no idea how they're how they're used in general but you can see all the individual shrink wraps and solder joints that are on here and, and very beautifully soldered um, you know nice and clean not too you know they don't have a big blob on there uh, you know so whoever did this did a fantastic job but you can tell that it, it had to have been hand done so getting in here a little bit deeper um, it does look like let's see here that's just one no, two wires. Two wires that are shielded in here. And then there's a common. Either this this is a ground wire or this this would have been a um, uh, just a shielding uh, reference wire. I guess you would you would consider it. Let's see here. Let's try and get some more of this out. Okay, so this one's in there pretty good. I wonder, I wonder if we can try and get this peeled back a little bit more. I don't know. It kind of looks like this connector um, is a. You can. It almost looks like you can torque it to to um, tighten it, but I, you know, I gotta imagine that it would probably take fair bit of force to, uh, to get it to release hmm yeah, I might have to have a play with that a little bit later on but anyway um, yeah it wasn't it was and it wasn't what I was expecting. I was ex I, I was half expecting to have some sort of um, coaxial line, but then this type of connector doesn't doesn't imply that it would be coax. It would it would have to be straight lines. But even even though it, I mean they might be twisted inside of inside of here. That's that's definitely a possibility. Uh, what I'm going to do is pause and I'm going to get a pair of um, channel locks and I'm going to see if I can't open this or open this to get a, to get a better look at the um, how the connector locks in so you know because there's there has to be a way of getting in here to actually solder to these these connectors so I will be back in a second now trying some different tools and a uh, variety of force trying to get this connector uh, open it just really just did not want to give it up so what I might end up doing is putting this in the vise and cutting it open to get it a better idea of, of how it uh, how it works but before I do that and destroy it uh, I wanted to show just how it connected with itself uh, with the other end of the cable so uh, there's a bunch of different um, guides 
all around here, preventing you from putting it in the wrong way. Here's the other end, just for comparison of how this guy looks. So, goes in like that very, very easily, and then you can see just how wonderfully it just goes together. It's, it's just a fantastic connector. Uh, and then backing it off, you know, quite, quite the bit of detent in the, um, in the connector here for, so it's easier to go on and then the detent coming off. Also, if you, if you look down in here, I don't know how well you will be able to see it or be able to see it at all, but there are actually, um, for, for RF, um, interference in there, there's, uh, pieces of metal that, that have a bow to them and so when when this connector actually goes in for contact uh, all the way in all the way around uh, it it meets the the um, outer face of, of, of this wall here so there's quite a bit of shielding that goes into it um, it it's kind of surprising that you would have a connector that's all metal um, that it would also have have that but uh, maybe that's just for better contact for the overall uh, connection of the the connector being shielded itself maybe it's just a better contact surface than relying on you know the threads um, being twisted together maybe the RF can can channel its way down the threads um, I'm not a I'm not a a radio engineer so I, I don't know the specifics on that but just a very lovely lovely connector it's gonna be a little bit of a shame to, to cut it open but uh, in the name of science so I'm gonna take this to the uh, to the bench to the other bench and uh, and we're gonna cut it open Well, luckily, a fair bit of success. Uh, ended up using the um, grinder with a uh, cutoff wheel to reveal how this is actually secured on here. Uh, there was two pins that were actually in here. I did see them, and I kind of figured that was more than likely that what was holding this in. So, what I'm assuming happens is there is a, um, if you look here, where's that pin at? Okay. So if you look in here, there's these grooves or slots in the metal here. And then what happens is um, there's this little tang or dog or whatever you want to call it that sticks out and it's and it, it's plastic surprisingly and so what I think happens is this pin in here pushes down on this on this little guy right here and then what it does is it helps to hold this in place so I was under the impression that this that this pin was actually going to go in here um, which would and would not make sense simply because if it was if, if the pin went in there that would mean that you would have to torque this down to a specific point with a hole that the pin would would um, index with so that would make sense but it wouldn't make sense because you know what if you couldn't get it to that right amount of uh, torque so another cool thing you know again a lot of work goes in, into the development of this and it's pretty amazing in uh, looking at some of these connectors uh, online. You know, you can see why this connector can go for fifty, a hundred dollars or, or more. Uh, so, looking here directly after the threads, there is a um, an O-ring or a gasket, whatever you want to call it, um, and then that goes to prevent water uh, or any other uh, ingress into into the rest of this. Um, this is also interesting uh, how they how they did this. Um, 
I don't know what this is called specifically, but um, just how this goes together and it stops it from, from twisting. It would keep it perfectly aligned and then you would twist this. So I gotta imagine that this stays connected here. Um, so that, yeah, so what would probably happen is this guy would spin freely like that. Just almost the same as how this spins freely. And then, and then what would happen is it would get tighter. And yeah, that's why they did that. So, um, you you would get your threads in there. You'd spin it and spin it and get it tighter, tighter, tighter. And then all of a sudden it would it would lock in place like that. So it couldn't it couldn't spin on itself because otherwise it it could potentially get if it backed off a little bit the the connector would become loose. So that prevents it from getting loose. Uh, also with this little with this locking pin that that holds it in place with these little grooves right here. Now, um, kind of what I thought it was going to be as far as termination. So we're going to take the rest of this off here. I ended up having to cut it. It was easier than having to take the whole th moving everything all over the place. So you can see all the different uh, cables here and then it's wrapped in captain tape. And then, uh, so everything here is pre-terminated. Uh, so I'm assuming that when you get this connector, you get the uh, pre-terminated connector and then you solder everything in that you want to solder in. Some of these cables, uh, some of these wires here have a little bit of a, of a twist to it. Um, so that would imply that this was for data. Uh, well, the whole thing ha pro more than likely has to be for data. Interestingly, there was a fair bit of um, power going on here. So this, this white connector, the center connector, and so that's W, and I'm assuming that H was this guy here. Yeah, so the two, the two power connectors, um, or excuse me, not H, Z, uh, so W and Z, um, you know, look, look at the braid on that for, for the grounding. Uh, you know, doesn't, it's amazing, you know, how, wh why they did that like that for, was that for flexibility? I don't know if this this whole um, shielding here goes the length, um, but for flexibility, instead of having, you know, a much coarser uh, stranded wire, you know, they went for ultra thin and then they braided it and then braided it again, uh, and then this guy right here, uh, I guess, just whatever cable that they they had purchased uh, could have been used for more control things, and they ended up commenting all these together for. Um, either the, the positive or, or negative uh, uh, supply. I, I'm assuming that this that this has to be the, um, the the negative side, and then this would be the positive side. And they're using one, two, three, four, five different cables. Um, also, I, you know, I'd like to take a look here and just see how fine the braiding is on that. Uh, so it's 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 not braided like I thought it was going to be. It just and I don't even think this is copper. I think this is probably steel, steel wire. So it's not even copper. Um, if if you looked at it closely, it almost looked like it was uh, um, uh, aluminum coated copper. It had a little bit of a copper hue to it in the in the center. Um, it doesn't look like they they used uh, two of the pins in here. So. Probably, well, I, I did destroy it. You know, it's pretty much unusable. I mean, you could still use it if you wanted to do a, um, you know, a quick connection just to test something. But uh, just a, an amazing amount of engineering that went into this connector. Um, I, I would guarantee within a thousand years this, this connector would not go bad. Just, just looking at, um, you know, how well engineered it is. You could probably use it, you know. A million times connecting disconnecting and and flexing especially with that that boot that was on there uh, you know and and then all the precautions that they had put with the gluing and that I mean even even if you look at the um, the label here uh, you can see the gluing that they did just to prevent you know any water from getting behind that or from from damaging it so you know from it if it was landing on the ground slapping you know on concrete or rock or 
or whatever uh, you know it, it was going to last be able to be visible um, and that so you can see here there's that big ground in the center there uh, I don't know if they would have used the um, the outer shielding uh, for for a type of ground as well or if that would be completely isolated as far as I'm looking right here it looks like this the center uh, conductor right here was completely uh, separate isolated from from the rest of it so and I just love how they just you know they, they could have done this any number of ways and, and they chose to to uh, shrink wrap everything individually I have seen for certain applications where um, the, the shrink wrap actually has like almost like a glue inside of it so that even though it's it's been shrink wrapped um, this glue would allow water to, to to prevent itself from getting in there but that obvi obviously this is not needed for this application because everything here is is already pre um, waterproofed uh, on the exterior of the of the connector so yeah very very interesting connector very expensive connector but you know in mission critical uh, applications you know it's definitely well worth it so anyway everyone thank you for watching uh, hopefully you like this uh, I'm gonna try and make some more videos in in this nature uh, tell me what you think and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one